Good morning. Welcome to In the Garden with Joyful Living. I am Kimberly Dixon. I'm going to give you a quick tour of the garden and then we're actually going to go inside uh, so that I can show you what we'll be talking about today. So as we wait for a few people to join, I'm going to do as I always do. I'm trying to uh, get out of the way. The sun is behind me. My kale is looking super nice now. Um, look at all those young tender leaves. I had eaten this down to almost nothing, but it has uh, regenerated. So I'm going to start eating it again. One of my spinach beds looking nice. I ate a lot of it last week. I was eating spinach in my omelets every day. The cilantro. My beautiful pansies are still surviving, even though it's kind of, uh, in the middle of winter. That's another pot of cilantro. My beets. Even though I planted them really late and didn't think um, they would do anything, um, they're surviving the winter, so I might have spring beets that were planted in the fall. <laughs> Who knows? But look at that beautiful cabbage. This head is actually firm now, so I can harvest that on today, and I've got several other plants that are nearing the mature stage. I'm sad. That's my last pot of cauliflower I have eaten all of the cauliflower and i've got one more head that's about to come in and this is the broccoli if you remember a few weeks ago i harvested the broccoli and i told you that broccoli will form shoots and that is precisely what this plant is doing it's forming side shoots that will be good morning tara small little florets of broccoli and this one even though I have not done the initial harvest of it, it is already forming. Can't see for all the beautiful leaves. Oh, that is actually the side shoot. See how big that one is? And then um, there's another one, but those will all be individual little heads of broccoli. I've decimated <laughs> those two beds of, of spinach. I love uh, being able to come out on the porch and just clip something and then have it for dinner. And then that's uh, another bin of beets that are coming along nicely. And for those of you who don't know, beet greens are actually edible too and very nutritious. So I'm going to take it inside. Look at Silas, y'all. Say good morning, baby. Good morning. Get down, honey. So today... I'm about to fall, trying to get back in the door without letting my baby get out. So today I want to talk about planting seeds of greatness. So as you can see here, I've got some of the things out that I'll be using to start some seeds with later today. This is peat moss, vermiculite, and perlite. And then I've got strawberry seeds and beefsteak tomato seeds. And I've got the little pots to put the seeds in. This is the beginning stage of getting a harvest. Now, in the years past, I would buy transplants. But because I've uh, increased my gardening scale and I want to show people how to do this inexpensively, Tara said, all this green makes me happy, honey. It makes me happy, too. I, every time I go out there, I just smile. Sometimes in the morning when it's really cold, I'll stand at the door with my cup of coffee and just look at that garden, literally just standing there looking at it because it makes me happy. It fills me up with joy. But in our life, all of us want to reap a harvest. But we forget that in order to reap a harvest, You've got to be planting seeds, and that's precisely what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to plant uh, strawberries for the first time, and I'm going to plant uh, a beefsteak tomato. Now, this is uh, usually an indeterminate variety and would need to go in the ground, but I'm going to buy a 15-gallon container, a grow bag, and attempt to grow a beefsteak tomato. I'm going to start the seeds out in these tiny little uh, pots with this seed starter mix that I am making myself so that the seeds have a greater chance of survival. Some of them will make it, some of them won't. But in order for you to reap a harvest in your life, you first got to plant a seed. 
that is something that I talk with my nieces and nephews about on a regular basis that, especially the ones who are in their early 20s, good morning, Suzette, that if you want to reap a harvest down the road, whether that be when you're 30, 40, or 50, you need to plant a seed for it now. So in order to reap an actual harvest of strawberries and tomatoes later on, I am about to start my strawberry seeds today. And then in about a week or two, I'm going to start the tomatoes so that by the time I get ready, when spring comes, I've got transplants large enough to put in a bigger pot and put in the garden. What that does is it increases uh, the chance, the likelihood of survival because everything that you plant, it may not uh, survive. The seed may die in the mix. It may not be ever become a seedling to, to develop into a mature plant. But in order to get a harvest, you got to plant a seed. So with these um, seeds here in each pot, I will put two seeds in case one seed doesn't germinate. Y'all forgive all the uh, Amazon boxes and all, everything else. One thing gardening does is turns your house into a junk pile, pal. But it's my lovely, beautiful junk pile. I don't even mind. But I'll put two to three seeds in each one of these pots in case one of the seeds doesn't germinate. And then of the ones that do come out, the strongest one, I'll keep. But the weaker ones, I'll just pinch off and then transplant it into the garden. And I'm using that special... special I can't talk this morning, y'all. I'm using this special mix of peat moss, vermiculite, and perlite because it's light and it's airy and it'll give the seeds more, it'll be the optimal environment for the seeds and they are more likely to germinate and to produce. I was repotting the aloe yesterday. Don't mind the dirt, y'all. It's dirt always around here. I'm one of those people that um, if you see me out and I got dirt under my fingernails, don't judge me. Because most, most of the time I've been digging in some dirt. I will be headed out the front door and see something with my plant and stop and mess with it and then get in the car and realize I got dirt under my fingernails. But, oh well. But anyway, back to the topic. Seeds of greatness. We all want a harvest. We want a big harvest. We want a big payday. But that is so unlikely to happen if we don't plant a seed. And planting seeds, there are so many ways. I am literally planting seeds here so that we get I get a harvest of strawberries and tomatoes. I'm not going to plant any pepper seeds because I'm trying to overwinter the seeds that, uh, I mean, the plants I showed you on last week. I'm attempting to make those last for two seasons. And in the event that they don't survive, I'll buy a transplant. But my goal is to use the pepper plants that I had from this previous season of 2020 and 2021 thereby reducing the cost of gardening because starting up gardening can get expensive if you don't have any other stuff but do like i did start small and every year increase the amount of stuff you have until you've got a full-blown garden but planting seeds of greatness is not just about the actual act of planting a strawberry seed or a tomato seed it is about planting into your family into your children. The words that you speak to your children, they have a lasting and profound effect. So you can either plant something into them that is going to uh, produce greatness, or you can plant something in them, in them that will have them struggling their entire life. You can plant seeds of greatness into your community. This little garden here has brought so much joy and smiles and conversation and laughter to the people that live right here in my community. That is unbelievable. Even some of the people on Facebook that I had not previously met, we have now met in person and had coffee in the garden because they've been watching these. This garden has, good morning Tamika, good morning everybody. Thank you guys for all the hearts. This garden has such, Tamika, you've got to come to the garden. I have not seen you in such a long time, and you have been such a wonderful supporter of not just me, but of the garden as well. You have to come by, and, you know, we socially distance and wear our mask, but when the spring garden gets planted, I definitely want you to come by. So planting seeds of greatness extends beyond your immediate circle. 
it extends to the community that you live in, the state that you live, and this country that we all live in. As you all saw on last week, I talked about it's praying time. Uh, don't stop praying. The inauguration is coming up next week, and we need to come together as a community, as a state, as a country, and pray for each other and protect each other and break down the walls of hatred. And you can only do that through love. Darkness is sim simply the absence of light. And if you have light inside of you, oh, Tara, that reminds me of a spoken word piece I did years ago at your hot spot. But if you have light in you, you can shine uh, light into dark places. That doesn't mean putting you yourself in a, a situation where you're going to be unsafe. But good morning, Alex. I'm so glad to uh, see that you're doing well, honey. I had you in my thoughts and my prayers but planting seeds of greatness can be actually planting a seed in our garden, but it can be planting. Uh, and the things that Alex does by acting and uh, playing and drumming, that's planting seeds of greatness. We have to be actively involved, not only in our family's life, but in our community, in our state, and in our country, because it is only as great as we make it. And if we want to get a harvest, if we want to be able to, to reap what something, we have got to sow something. The the word teaches as you reap what you sow. And I showed you my gardening, my my bedding material for my seedlings because you know the parable in the Bible talks about some seed fell on the rocky ground, some fell by the wayside. You have got to put your seed in good ground. If you don't it can be destroyed by the devil. It can fall by the wayside. It, it can die before it ever reaches maturity. But when you plant seeds of greatness early on, then it can become a mature plant that can give fruit to your family, give fruit to your community, give fruit to your state. And I mean literally and figuratively because my having a garden here, my neighbors and my friends all benefited from the food that I was growing here. I didn't realize it would be so much, but it's more than one person can actually ever eat. So I shared it with my neighbors. I shared it with my friends. And just with these seedlings, I'm going to plant multiple ones. And any of the ones that I don't plant in my actual garden, I will either give away or share with other people. So that's how you... Something as simple and as small as that. My neighbor, she doesn't even speak a, a lot of English but I shared what I had with her, and now she's become my friend. So let's go out there and let's plant some seedness, seeds of greatness in your actual garden, in your family, in your community, in your state. And remember, guys, let's keep, continue to pray for one of each, one of each, each other, and then let's get actively involved. Don't just sit by and watch the news of what's going on. Get actively involved in uh, what your community and show up because silence is actually agreement. Everybody's not going to be an act activist, but there are still things that you can do. So, guys, I love you all. Thank you for watching this episode of In the Garden with Joyful Living that was mostly indoors today. I love you. I love it. I love you. Bye-bye. <laughs>